พระเอกสวงHave you heard of the seven spirits of the Lord? I, okay, you know the seven spirits of the Lord can be identified by a color. Yeah, you know, um, seven spirits of the Lord are different to the gifts, nine gifts of the Spirit. It's actually a higher realm. Yeah. Jesus moved in the seven spirits of the Lord. You know, and the spirit of might. You remember the spirit of might that was on, on. Uh, David's mighty men. They could fight all day without getting tired. Remember that they did incredible things, you know. Samson, the spirit of might would come upon him. Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah! Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge. These are actually angelic spirits. These stand before the throne of God in heaven. And. Uh, They don't leave there; they stand before the throne of God. But under them, they have myriads of angels under them, which move in the same anointing as those who stand in heaven. For instance, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There are myriads of those angels under that one high-ranking angel in heaven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and they come into the earth. The spirit of the fear of the Lord um, is an incredible. Presence anointing that comes. Charles Finney had that. That anointing. That angel followed him wherever he went. And uh, we see others in Scripture. You know, and uh, the spirit of might, spirit of the fear of the Lord, spirit of understanding. The spirit of the Lord is the central theme of the candlestick. It's the central pole of the candlestick. Jesus said this: "The spirit of the Lord is upon me." And he was talking about one of these seven spirits of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord is a prophetic anointing. And every other one of those other spirits are touched by the central spirit of the Lord, the you know, the the prophetic anointing. He said, "The spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach." He was prophesying as he preached. See, and uh, the spirit of the Lord is always manifest. A prophetic anointing as a red color. They represented by each color of the rainbow. There is a rainbow before the throne of God in heaven. The colors of the rainbow, and there's a spirit of wisdom. It just is. It has an orangey, orangey color. Spirit of understanding is yellow. The spirit of counsel is green. Each of these, these colors represent these anointings. That these angels carry, spirit of might is blue, knowledge indigo, fear of the Lord is violet, and we can discern these by the color that eman that emanates from them when they're in operation. Now, these colors only apply to the seven spirits of the Lord. There are colors that apply to other things in the Bible, but I'm talking about only the seven spirits of the Lord, and. Uh, It's interesting to have these things around, you know. Zechariah called them the seven eyes of the Lord. Revelation one verse four: the seven lamps that burn before the throne. Same thing. We're talking about the same thing. Seven lamps, the seven eyes of the Lord. Second Chronicles six and nineteen says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking. Watching, seeking for those whose heart is perfect towards the Lord, and I felt that as I walked in here tonight, that the eyes of the Lord are watching, watching us. They travel the earth, 
watching to find someone whose heart is towards the Lord. Searching. These are these spirits of the Lord that come and, and, and they are bringing incredible anointing when they come. They can impart so much. They can clothe the whole meeting. And uh, we have to learn, you know, to begin to, to work with these. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Looking for a heart that is towards the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11 talks about those seven spirits of the Lord which rested upon Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Spirit of understanding is here tonight. That's not understanding here, you know. That's revelation bursting within our heart which gives us understanding. There are other spirits here tonight. So let's keep our hearts, you know, open to the Lord, eh? Just, 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 just. Because God wants to touch us and impart us with something. Let's just pray for a moment, shall we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I take authority over every opposing spirit here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every posing, every disrupting spirit. Father, we bind every form of opposition against us tonight. I stand against witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Stand against the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. We bind every form of opposition that is against us tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Oh, by, so I don't forget, our table closes tonight because uh, it, it, we, my friends have to go back to Lancaster, fly out to Lancaster tomorrow. So if you want anything come from our table, tonight's the night. It won't be there tomorrow, okay? Just to let you know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Really keep your heart open tonight. God wants to impart revelation you know praise God hallelujah this is a generation that will seek his face the Bible says seek his face not just seek his presence seek his face seek the face of the Lord who shall ascend you know the hill of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place we saw that David brought the ark back to Mount Zion and for a short period of time it was there, affected the whole surrounding area. At night, it was a light that covered the whole of Jerusalem. It just shone out. And, uh, but there came a time when that came to an end. And, uh, you know, David's son, Solomon, came to the throne. God told him that he was to build a temple. And the ark was to go back behind the curtain, okay, into the temple. We know Solomon uh, was commissioned to do that. And uh, he built this temple. It says that David couldn't build the temple because he was a man of war. And because this temple would, um, would typify a time of rest. It could not be built in David's time. Because in David's time there was no rest. It was warfare all the time. But when he talked to Solomon, there was no more warfare. That was it. And uh, so he built it. And they brought the ark, took it off Mount Zion, and they put it into Solomon's temple. And it says in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 2, And the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon in the feast uh, of, in the month of Etham, which is the seventh month. So they, in the seventh month, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, they brought the ark back into Solomon's temple. It says, And all the elders came, and the priests took the ark, and they brought up the ark of the Lord of the tabernacle of the congregation, with all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord into its place, into the oracle, oracle of the house of the Most Highly, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings 
over the place of the ark. And the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof. And they drew out the staves. And the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle. They were not seen without. And there they are, it says, unto this day. So they bring the ark into the temple that Solomon had built. And they said, now we will remove the staves from it. It will not ever depart again. And it's a picture of this generation when the ark is returned to the church in its fullness. That power, that anointing, that revival will never wane again. It will go on, on into the millennium reign of Christ. In the past, we've had revivals. They come and go, right? This one's going to build up real slow till it hits its peak. And it will continue on right to the end of the age. Aren't you pleased about that? Yeah. You know, this is different to any other revival that's, come, that's ever been. This is going to be permanent. He pulled out the staves. They had those staves which carried the ark to the next place, remember? They pulled them out. Hallelujah. And the cloud is moving one more time to take us to this place. And the staves will be removed. Hallelujah. It's going to be a permanent thing. That's if you're a part of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Solomon's temple was a picture of the end time church and the millennium reign of Christ. Remember when he dedicated the temple, what happened? Yeah. Something got out of the ark and filled the whole place. And the priest couldn't stand to minister. That never happened before. That didn't happen in David's tab uh, in the tabernacle of Moses. The glory was shut into the holy place, holiest of all. And one man could get in once a year. He represented the rest of the people. But not this time. They dedicated the temple. I can just see the angels and they lifted the lid just a little bit. The glory of God filled the temple of Solomon. Nobody could take it anymore. They couldn't stand. That was it. They went down before the Lord. And this was a permanent thing now. It was a picture of the end time church. Hallelujah. You see, there was two angels covered the lid. There was the lid was called the mercy seat. And two angels either side spread their wings over it. God, they were guarding the Ark of the Covenant. But God, in his mercy, is going to lift that mercy seat in this generation and let it out. Hallelujah. The mercy seat will be lifted. Oh, now we're talking about something which is inside of you. It just needs the lid off. Just a little bit, you know. I don't want it to be disrespectful, but it's like the genie will get out of the bottle this time. You know, yeah, that, the presence of God will explode within you and transfigure you. That's not translation. That something happens to you while you're here. On a, uh, transfiguration was not just for Jesus. Right. Yeah. It's not just for Jesus. You imagine if that got loose on the inside, what it would do to you, your soul and your physical body? Jesus was on the mount of transfiguration. Wow, it happened to him. It hadn't happened to him before that time. And it burst out through his whole being into his clothing. And it said, he shone. And the disciples were on their face. And there was a voice from heaven that says, this is my son. It's coming a day not very far away. And that explosion is going to take place with inside of us. And God is going to say to the world, these are my sons. And the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon them. Try and get this tonight because you can only go as far as you can see. You need to understand the revelation. You need to understand how this thing is going to work. 
there's going to be an explosion inside of you. When God in his mercy lifts the mercy seat just a little bit, just needs a crack, you know. And out he'll get. And he'll fill the temple. Hallelujah. This is better than a baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you. This is not Pentecost now. This is Tabernacles. It's a different experience. You experience an experience that changed your life when you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's something more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you imagine what's going to happen to you when that explosion goes off? Hallelujah. Yeah, I wreck everything. <laughs> they removed the staves from the ark. Beautiful picture of the end time church. The revival will never fade. And it says, and King Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, spread forth his hands unto heaven and said, Oh, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like unto you in heaven above or on the earth beneath, which keepeth your covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before you with all their hearts. And he went on to say, and you know, I if we sin and go away from God, there'll be a day when he will call us back in again. And it was a prophetic picture of Israel. We'd, we would go away from God, you know, for 2,000 years. But he's going to call them in again. It's a picture, you see, of, of, of and, and it's, there's like, in the dark ages, the church went away from him for a 1,000 years. That's very significant. And he said, but if we cry unto the Lord, he will hear us and he'll come back and he will restore us. And as God has restored Israel, brought them back to their own land, so he's restoring us. Israel would be brought back to their own land. This was what Solomon was saying. And the church would be back to their promised land. See, the early church lost it. They went into decline. And finally, into a thousand years of darkness, the lights went out, you know. And ever since the Reformation, God's trying to bring us back to this point in time now. Hallelujah. And this is what Solomon was praying about. This is what he was talking about. Hallelujah. The fact that the dedication of this ark was on the feast of tabernacles is very significant prophetically because he was saying when the church starts to keep the feast of tabernacles we're at this point he prayed and the glory of god filled the house you know imagine you just get a hundred people whom the glory of the lord is filled and they come into a church transformation They'll be like beacons. It says the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Yeah. What does seen mean? Come on, what does it mean to be seen? It means to be seen. It's not metaphoric. It's not spiritual. It's seen. We've spiritualized everything. You've got the light of the world, you know. Hallelujah. Set on a hill. The Lord will appear in his glory. Hallelujah. He will be openly manifest to the world. Just as in the days of David, during that time of David's tabernacle where God was openly manifest to the whole of Jerusalem. I mean, you can imagine the light coming off that mountain. Everybody could see it day and night. He was openly manifest. Hallelujah. The same is going to happen. That's where we're heading. Open the, the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. When Jesus was transfigured, he said his, even his clothes began to shine. Such was the outflow of what had happened on the inside of him. You see? And he was an example for all who would follow him. He was baptized. We are baptized. 
right? And so we have this example of Jesus. We follow him. He was, if he was the forerunner. But the church never thinks that because he was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, that's for us too. We are following him. We can never hear, these are my sons, until we've been transfigured. Never. It's coming into sonship. You know, sonship in a Jewish family was kind of something different we need to understand. In a Jewish family, a father would never call his son, a male child, his son. Never. He would call him his child until he reached the age of 30. And then they would call all family and friends into the house because the, fa the father of the house was going to now reveal his, his child, male child, as a son. He would never call him by name. He would call him his child. They'd get all the family together. Okay? This was a Jewish tradition that went all the way back called sonship and then uh, it was quite a ceremony but finally the father would stand in the middle of the house with all friends and relatives around he would bring the boy out and he'd say this is my son he now represents me he can sign the checks in my business he can do anything he want he is my son and when the that voice from heaven came, this is my son. In the baptism of Jesus, other times it says, this is my son. Every Jew that heard that knew exactly what he meant. That voice came from heaven. The Bible said they heard a voice from heaven. This is my son. Now you listen to him. You've called on me all of your life. Now listen to him. This is my son. It's unmistakable. A lot of them would have been terribly confused, you know? This is Jesus, Joseph's son. But there was another voice came out. This is my son. I am God, and this is my son. From now on, listen to him. So they understood that. And one day, I was going to say to the world, these are my sons, these are my daughters. You listen to them. They represent me. My name is in them. Hallelujah. And we will do business on his behalf in the earth. With his authority behind us. You know? You've seen these companies around the world? You know? Someone and son. You see? Someone and son. That comes from this tradition. He could do business on behalf of his father. Let me say again, you can only go as far as you can see. It takes revelation to take you to where we're going. You have to know this and see it. It has to come to you as an impacting revelation of who you are. And then you can go as far as you can see. Can you see yourself down that way? Can you see yourself hear God saying, this is my son? This is my daughter. Transfiguration is taking place. Hallelujah. You see, the hope of this world is Christ in us. In us. This hope is doomed without Christ in us. The Lord's not going to come back again and save this world. And I say that reverently, but it's the truth. It's now his sons who are going to do business on his behalf. They are going to save the world. Now, that's not blasphemous, believe you me. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? It's just a little way down the way. Oh, glory to God. Isaiah 62, his glory shall be seen upon you. And when that happens, he said, the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you.
Hallelujah. I can just be for the massive end time harvest comes in. And they are drawn to Christ in you. Hallelujah. You see, this generation is going to see Christ in full manifestation in us. That's what it's all about. And the Feast of Tabernacles in the time of Jesus was very, very interesting. You know, it, it was like... Look, there's no doubt that Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout and we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I believe that. I believe in the rapture. I believe on that. I'm quite Pentecostal in all of this, all right? But before he comes for us, he's coming in us. You see? I often used to think, Lord, I look across the world because I travel a lot, the church is a real motley crew, you know. I mean, how are you going to get them to be a perfect bride? How on earth are you going to do this, Lord? I mean, look at us. Look how far away we are from that. You know, come on, let's be realistic. How far are you away from a perfect bride before the Lord? I used to think, Lord, you'll never do it. <laughs> We're running out of time. It just takes a lifting of that lid. That's all it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you are really privileged that God gives us ears to hear in these days because there are millions of Christians out there not hearing anything like this. You know the ten wise and the ten foolish virgins? Remember that? All Christians, all virgins, who speaks of purity. Okay? Five made it into the bride. Fifty percent made it into the bride, and fifty percent missed it. Still saved, but they missed getting into the bride. This doctrine that says everybody's going to be in the bride of Christ. No, they're not. Bride has made herself ready. 50% get in. Don't look at me like that. I'm telling you the truth. That's what the Bible says, doesn't it? When the bridegroom comes, only 50% are ready. And he's talking about all Christians. And you cannot enter into something you can't see. If you don't have the revelation of it, you can't enter into it. We're privileged in this day to have some understanding of these things. So that we can enter into it. If we don't have the understanding, we can't enter in. You know? And you think, God, God will never get me there. He can get you there. If you want to get there. It's not a problem to God. Oh, glory to God. We need to understand there is a rapture while we're waiting for rapture. We're going to be caught up into the glory of God before that final event takes place. You see, we've always had this mentality, you know, the church is hanging on with the skin of her teeth and Jesus is going to come, a, come back for us, you know, just when we're on the verge of giving up. <laughs> we were taught that in the Pentecostal church, old before it. You know, don't get outside the fort, you might get killed. Just hold the fort. God's chosen few. Little flock. Where did they get this stuff from? I was taught that in Bible school and I had such arguments with my professors. Because I kept saying, the Bible doesn't say that. You know? Little flock. Right out loud. God's going to have the majority. You know? Hallelujah. You know, the word rapture doesn't appear in Scripture. Somebody down there, I don't know who coined the phrase, which describes it. And that's all right. You know, people say, oh, I don't believe in the rapture. That word doesn't appear in Scripture. Well, you better look at a few other Scriptures. Because in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last time we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive and remain will be caught up with him. Now call it what you like. A catching up, a rapture, or anything. He's talking about the same thing. That is coming, but before then. Oh, hallelujah. Before then. Mm, glory to God. God's going to come in his fullness in us. His fullness, you see, in us. Now, in, in 2 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 16, he says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we told you about the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, every time we say that word, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we think about the second coming, right? He wasn't talking about that. The word perusia, same word, perusia. He said, we didn't tell you fables when we talked to you about the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses to this event of his majesty. What, when, what were they talking about? We were eyewitnesses of this event. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from this excellent glory which said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice came from heaven when we were with him in the holy mountain. He's not talking about the second coming, but we understand it. He's talking about when they went up the mountain and he was transfigured before them. He said, we saw that happen to him. The coming, we saw the coming of the Lord. What were they talking about, you see? We don't know really what mountain. Theologians, it doesn't say, but theologians hassle over it, you know. It wouldn't surprise me if it was Mount Zion, you know. But can't prove that. But, you know, that word, we were witnesses of his coming. He's coming first in us. You see, this is my beloved son, he said. When that event took place, the parousia, the presence, you know, he was transfigured before them. The Bible says, uses the same word by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the word metamorphosis in the, in the Greek language. You know, we know today morphing because that, that goes on. It's like part of the whole Hollywood thing, morphing. It comes from that word. A total change takes place. As we begin to press into God, we start to renew our minds. We renew our minds and we're faithful to do this. We come down to the final hit, transfiguration. When every negative thought and image, memory that's negative is removed in an instant of time. This doesn't run any more interference with what's in here. That's the heritage of the sons of God, which is just down the way. Total renewal. Metamorphosis, that's how it's described. You know, after this happened to Jesus, Jesus was totally different. He did things he never did before. Totally different. Walked through people in the midst. This, these things happened because of this transfiguration experience. You see? Not a resurrection body. But the, an explosion took part on the inside. Something in our spirit. The ark, the lid was opened. And bang! Right through us, through our physical body, through every cell, through every molecule in our body, the power of God ran through. And total transformation. At that point, you stop aging. Yeah. You know, people have so many facelifts. I mean, like, <laughs> I was listening to a conversation in, on a plane. This is so funny. Don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm irreligious. I was listening to this conversation on the plane. Two women talking about another woman who'd had about, about four or five, six facelifts, you know? 
oh, that's all right. You know, uh, an old barn door looks better than a coat of paint, but you know, it's... <laughs> I didn't get it. Only joking. Okay, the day I was listening to this conversation, these two women going on, you know, quite loud. They were right behind me, I was listening to this, and I heard this woman say, that lady has had so many facelifts. She said, her belly button is now on her chin. <laughs> I couldn't get that image out of my mind on the plane. <laughs> you won't need a facelift. Hallelujah. Transform. Transform by the power of God in an instant of time. Not the rapture. This is coming after this. This is to prepare the sons of God to do their job in this day, in the last days of the earth. Oh, my Zion. And then you will start to glow. And people will say, what is it with you? Anybody coming close to you will get healed. They just need to get close to you. You won't do nothing. They'll just get caught in, 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 in your shadow, you know? You'll get caught. You know? You know, the, the new age, get it close when they talk about our aura. You've all got an aura, all right? And, and they are spiritual enough to be able to, in the demonic realm, to be able to read it. It's not hocus pocus. They can read what you're emanating. Okay, your aura will be so big. Anyone getting close, walking through that, will be healed. We have no idea the magnitude of what is coming. These are the sons of God doing business on God's behalf in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. No, I'm not crazy. This is going to happen. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead while you're still here in the flesh shall quicken your mortal body while you're still here. That word quicken literally means to be made alive with the life of another. That's a, that's a long Greek word. To be made alive. That this gets out of you. Made alive with the life of another. Oh, glory to God. Oh. <laughs> and the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. The first coming in us. I tell you. Peter said, we didn't tell you ta uh, some large tale when we told you about what happened. We saw the coming of the Lord. We saw the parousia. You know? We saw this happen. We were there. We were witnesses to it. You know? Whether it was on the mount of Zion or not, we don't know. It's a picture of Jesus coming into his people. Oh, I tell you. Not the resurrection body. It's the fullness of Christ in us. Now, just before Jesus took his disciples up to the Mount of Transfiguration, he said this to them in Matthew chapter 17. Uh, it's, uh, sorry. Uh, yes. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, he said, After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain apart. After six days. Where are we on God's calendar? We passed the sixth day. We passed it. End of the sixth day, he takes them up into the mountain. That was a prophetic statement. And the verse before that says, Some of you who are standing here shall see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Shortly, the world's going to see Jesus coming into his kingdom here. Like never before. We know he's in us. But he's going to come forth in his fullness within us. He said, he said some of you are standing here. The disciples, you'll see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Then, after six days, he took them up into the mount. And was transfigured before them. 
Oh, if we can get a hold of this, hallelujah. Christ in us. Titus 2, 13, looking for this blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God. Now we are in the mindset, that's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It could have reference to that as well. But its prime reference is in us. He's coming in us first. The coming of the Lord draws nigh two events that are taking are going to take place very soon. There are some standing here who said, we'll see the Son man coming into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.19, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. This is all while we stand here on this earth. Christ in us. You know, the whole of creation is waiting for this to happen. The Bible says, a whole of creation is waiting for this to happen. A manifestation of God's sons. I know that there was a doctrine back in the early reign and so on. It went haywire and all of that. That's, you know, that's some right and some wrong. It's happening in our day. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? Are you looking forward to that? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. The whole of creation is waiting for it. The hope, of the, the hope, the only hope for this world is Christ in us. It has no other hope. The Lord's not going to come down to earth and save the earth. He comes back next down from, in the flesh. He's coming for his people, not to save the earth. you got to save the earth. See, we've always had this thing. Jesus is going to come and save the earth. No? Next time he comes, <laughs> he's going to flatten it <laughs> and give us a new canvas. Christ in us is the hope, only hope for the millions of people on this earth. That is their only hope. Get to know who you are. Get to know what your destiny is. Man lost this planet. Man has to regain it. Jesus paid the way, opened the way, made it possible. And he now he sets the earth at his foot to And he waits till all things are put under his feet. What's he waiting for? Us. To put all things under his feet on this earth. He's not going to come and do that. That's our job. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then we will appear with him in glory. Same thing we're talking about. Not in the second coming, in the, in the classic sense. He went on to say in 1 John 3, 2, Now are we the sons of God. Bad translation. That word sons is, a, is the Greek word for a little child. But it doth not yet appear what we're going to become. Now are you little children, he was saying to them, but does not yet appear. You don't look like it yet, but it does not yet appear what you shall be. Hallelujah. Sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear in us, we shall be like him. And the world will see Jesus in us. That's their only hope. I mean, you might not have heard this before. The spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding here tonight. So I, I, and, and I ask the Lord to help me and send some help from these spirits. And they are here to open up our understanding. So we see something we've never seen before and say, yes, we can get this. That's possible for me. I've got hope now. Hallelujah. I've struggled all my life with many, many things, but I've got hope. This thing's going to explode on the inside. 
Oh, hallelujah. Total transformation. Total transformation. Hallelujah. Oh. You know, Jesus left this earth with a final statement. You know, and uh, which is very significant. It tells us in Acts chapter 1, 11, it says, which also said, you men of Galilee, which stand you gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go to heaven. That scripture seemed to puzzle me. Because I thought, nah, can't be. He went up slowly in the clouds, right? In the mind of all of us, he ascended slowly into heaven. How is he coming back? Well, he's coming back with the side of a chomp. The armies of the Lord is nothing like this. But what was he talking about? In like manner, as you see him go, he's going to come again. You see, what, what was he referring to? Hallelujah. You know, after his death, Jesus appeared to many, many people. Just appeared to them. He was manifest. He came. It was a perusia. His presence literally came to them. You know, on the road to Emmaus in Luke, I think it was chapter 24. Not, not Emmaus. On the, in Luke chapter 24, Mary Magdalene, Mark 16, 9. The 11, 11 apostles, John 20, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 tells us, and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. After that, he was seen of about 500 people at the same time. You know, five is a lot of people to appear to at the same time of whom the greater are still alive until that day. After that, he was saying of James and then of all of the apostles. This is a phenomena that's taking place. And we don't, that's only the recorded ones that took place. There was a phenomena, you see, that began to take place, you know, after Jesus left this earth. He said in the same manner, he's going to come back to you. He wasn't talking about the second coming. Don't look at me like that. He wasn't talking about, he's not coming that way in the second coming, the same way as that he went. He appeared to all of these people. There was a phenomenon that was very, very unusual. And he said, this phenomena is going to take place again just before I return. Jesus is going to start to appear to and in his people. It's going to do that. It's going to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just going to come. We'll be having a meeting like this, and it'll come. And I don't say happen. That's happening now. Jesus just comes and says, let me talk to the people. And every eye sees him. This is happening in the Islamic world at an incredible rate now. Amazing things are happening. Hallelujah. He's not just going to appear in you. In this initial stage, he's going to start to appear to us. If you believe it, if you can see it, he's going to appear in board meetings when we're discussing what to do and the things of God. He's going to sit down with us and I say, let me talk to you. I've seen it happening. I've seen it happening. Oh, hallelujah. No wonder he said he's left the best wine till the last, you know. The early church didn't have much of this. Oh, glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. 500 people he appeared to in one hit, one time. It doesn't tell us where or how, it's just a statement recorded in Scripture. That was after they saw him ascend. He appeared, he came back in like manner and appeared to 500 people. And the disciples, and all, we know the story. He 
You see, God's going to prepare the way for us. He's going to do this to prepare us. When Christ, our life, who is our life, shall appear, we will appear with him in glory. Oh, hallelujah. Now are we the children of God, but it does not yet appear what what's we shall be. We've always said, oh, when we get to heaven, we'll be, look, that is not the case. We fail if we don't, if we're not conformed, formed into his image while here on the earth, we fail in our mission. That's the main destiny and purpose we have in our life. Paul said, I travail until Christ be fully formed within you. It has to happen while we're here on the earth alive in this flesh. You see? He said, I travail for this to happen to you. Hallelujah. I know of a guy in, in Africa, in, an illiterate man. He got saved. And they said, well, you need to um, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I heard all about this Holy Spirit, you see. So he goes into the forest looking for the Holy Spirit. He's now saved. But, you know, the Africans will look for spirits. You see, in the forest, the spirits of the river, the trees, and so on. So he goes into the forest looking for the Holy Spirit. And he meets Jesus. And Jesus said, let me introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to send you to a very sophisticated place, the Western world. Totally illiterate. And this man says, I, I, I don't understand English. I can hardly speak my own language, my understanding English. The Lord said, and that's easy. The Holy Spirit touched him and downloaded the English language into him. And he spoke perfect Queen's English. And he's traveling the world, preaching among English-speaking people. Promise of things to come. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was someone in England, you know, he gets saved. And he keeps saying to the Lord, Lord, I'd love to be an artist. I'd love to be an artist. I'd love to be an artist. Couldn't paint to save his life, you know. Couldn't even paint the back fence. And the Lord says, okay, come to him in a dream, lays hands on him. Next day he can paint these magnificent paintings. And they're all spirit painting. She sells them to the New Age movement. <laughs> incredible <laughs> incredible gift just like that you know it's like hold on I've got a I've got a CD up here and I'll just stick it in your computer and load it down it was quick as that he knew everything the syntax the culture the background everything was loaded with it he could speak it perfectly Oh, glory to God. See, these sons of God are going to go into every nation and speak their perfect language. Go to another nation, they'll speak their perfect language. Oh, glory to God. We struggled. My wife and I, missionary, you know, and learning French. Oh, man. We thought we were good, but the French thought we were terrible. <laughs> you know, we were in in French Pacific Islands, working as missionaries. Like, oh, man. We definitely needed a download. Hallelujah. Oh. Hope of the church. Hope of the church. So Jesus comes. And he comes up to Jerusalem in the Feast of Tabernacles. Disciples said, come on, the feast is on. We need to go up. He said to Jesus, come, the feast is on. We need to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles in, in Jerusalem. And um, Jesus said, oh, um, you go, you go. And he stayed on. He didn't go up. But, and, and it said, Jesus said, my time is not yet come, but your time is ready. You go up. And, uh, and he said, go you up to the feast, and I won't go up yet unto the feast, for my time has not yet come. 
And when he said these words unto him, he stayed in Galilee. But when the brethren had gone up, it says to the feast, Jesus went up in secret on the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus is going to come in secret before he comes again. He's going to come up in secret. This was right on the Feast of Tabernacles. Incredible feast. The last day of the feast. Now, on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, at the end of the feast, the high priest would take a big, big container of wine. Okay? And then he would take another container of water and mix them together. And then he would come to the temple steps on Jerusalem. And he would take this and he would pour the water so it ran down the steps into the streets. And Jesus is watching this. And he can't take it anymore. Because he knows this is going to happen on the Feast of Tabernacles. He's watching this. He said, if any man come unto me, out of his belly shall flow these rivers of water. And it was right there at the end, Feast of Tabernacles. They picked up a little of this in Pentecost, but not the fullness. Because when Jesus said those words, he was attending this feast, not Pentecost. He was attending this feast. And you see the river that runs out of Ezekiel's temple goes down into the streets. And everything that that river touches is healed. Out of your mouth, transfiguration. Out of your mouth. Everything your words touch shall bring healing and life and restoration. This is our heritage. This is a feast we must keep. People say, I don't believe the Feast of Tabernacles is for today, our day and age. That's okay. You can miss out. But we believe. Why have two other feasts and put one, the last one, into the millennium? Come on, that doesn't make sense. We have to keep them all like Israel kept them all. I have argued with my professors over this until they almost threw me out. I used to say, how do you know this is in the millennium? Give me some scriptures. They never did. We just said, oh, we know better than you. I heard. <laughs> my wife would just say, shh, shh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I said, that makes sense. You know, it makes sense. Glory to God. You know, a lot of things they told us didn't make sense. But, hallelujah. The early church turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. We're going to turn it the right side up. <laughs> Praise God. This is your heritage. This is something you can have. Just like salvation was something you can have. Just like the baptism of the Holy Spirit was free, you didn't earn it, did you? You didn't have anything to do with it. It's a free gift, right? There's nothing has changed when you start to experience the Feast of Tabernacles. It is a free gift. Transfiguration is a free gift. You don't earn it. You just have to want it. Press in, seek, ask, knock. Know it's there for you. Believe it's going to happen all it is. You haven't got to become holy before this happens. This is a finishing touch of holiness in your life, particularly when it touches us here and here. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the heritage of the people of God and this generation. This is your day. We need to understand our purpose, understand where we're going. We need to gather the resources to help us. I'm serious about this. We need to gather, think about it. We need downloads to understand what is required now, how we're going to prepare for this, com this thing that's coming, the logistics of it, you know, what takes place. I'm not talking about putting in a big structure. Talking about how we're going to handle this. We need the mind, the pattern of the Lord on this. 
you know. Gather resources, gather, understand. This thing is coming. Prepare for it within our hearts. Prepare for it at our faith levels. Begin to speak it to ourselves over and over. I'm going to enter into this. Talk it out, talk it out, talk it out. This is your day. Hallelujah. You know, most Christians are taken captive by the tyranny of time. We never get round to doing things that are important. Because there's so many other things that take our time. Oh. You know, I used to get up, I tell you this story, and then we'll do it close. I get up most mornings somewhere between more, more towards five in the morning, right? Because it's quiet. You get up. Make a cup of tea, or a cup of coffee, sit down, just quietly talk to the Lord. Most of my experiences come out of this time, right? So I got up, it was just about two weeks before I came here. I got up in the morning, and I just sat down. And I had missed coming, doing this for three days, and I was feeling real guilty. I mean, real guilty. I, 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 I'd never done that before, like missed it since I started doing it. And I thought, oh God, we're we so busy. And there were so many deadlines to meet. And we've been, I was being pressured from other people and something to meet these deadlines, you know, and I missed it. And I thought, oh boy, I've got to get back. And just, I closed my eyes and I began to tell the Lord that I'm sorry. And I was no longer there. I was standing on the sea of glass in heaven. And I thought, I'm going to stand right at the back. I felt so guilty. A lot of people, you don't know any idea what goes on on that sea of glass. I mean the choreography, the music. There were angels with babies in their arms who just come into the kingdom of God. There were women with babies who just died and come into the kingdom of God. There were people dancing. I mean, it was full on. Worship, music, singing, saints, angels, all joining together. And I was standing at the back here and I thought, I'm close enough. You know, I just, Lord, let some of that stuff wash off me. And I stood there and I heard this voice, Neville. Come here. Uh, oh. I looked at everybody. Not, they didn't seem to hear it. And I said, I took t two steps like this, right to the back. And I thought, I just imagined that. It was like I was having a dream, but I was awake. And I heard, Neville, come here. I thought, oh man, I'm in trouble now. So I started to walk like this, slowly through the crowds. I mean, there are people dancing, the choreography. I, I cannot explain it. It is perfect. People dancing and singing, and angels flying, but it's all symmetrically arranged. And all. Anyway, I was walking and I got right up to the front of the throne. I've never seen the Father's face yet. See his outline, full of light. You can see his arms. Many times I've seen his arms and feet, never his face. Up to this date, I've never seen that. And I just stood there, just waiting. I put my head down. I thought, well, oh, man, here it comes. And he said, Neville, I've missed you. I thought, oh, that is something I didn't want to hear. I said, you've missed me. And that, that, I was totally undone, straight away. I thought I was really going to be get a good telling off. I thought, really, the Lord's going to get off his bike to me and really tell me off. You know? thought, oh, man. Um, he said, Neville, I've missed you. And I thought, oh, man. And I, and I started to cry. I still felt a little guilty. You know? I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I miss. I know you are the priority in my life, but I don't know what happened, but I miss having time with you, spending my covenant to, uh, Lord, to have this time with you. And I've missed three days in a row and 
and, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And when I said that, I saw this arm reach out and pull me into himself. Instantly, there was an explosion of love. I, I could not tell you how it felt. It is impossible for me to explain. I felt incredibly safe. And I thought, I mean God. And a lot of scriptures start to go through in my mind. You know, in Christ, in God, all the, those scriptures, you know, I will come to you and manifest myself to you. All those scriptures got running through my mind. And I thought, my goodness. And in, in God is in it, it's a massive place. I can't explain this. But to me, it seemed like he was much bigger on the inside than the outside. I mean, there were eons and eons of history were flashing before me. Eons passed. Way up into the future, I saw one or two glimpses of the millennium. Just one or two glimpses of what that millennium would be like. All this stuff was going on within me. And I was thinking, oh, God. God. I thought, look, say, oh, God. And I said, you know, he, this history is his story. And it never ended. And I saw like eternity was like a circle. It just never ended. A circle never ends, you know? And it keeps on expanding to another layer again. And it never ends. Uh, and then I thought, then I saw my life. I saw my life coming to this earth. I saw that I had fellowship in eons in heaven. I saw, I don't know how better to tell you this. Oh, what the heck. I saw, you know, that I had made covenants with people who I would be joined to in this earth. I'd make covenants and say, we'll get together, we'll work together when we're down there. The problem is, when we get to earth, finding them among six million people, billion people. And as we grow older and unto the secular life the memory goes my little grandchildren were incredible i heard them talking together very young very young and one was saying to the you remember the trees in heaven they're nothing like the trees we have in our garden are they what you know and they were talking about this then i heard this which kind of blew me away. Remember when we agreed that you would come first and I would come after you? I thought, where did you get that from? They cannot remember it now. They've grown, schooled, all the stuff's in the mind, locks out. Don't label me as New Age, okay? This is New Testament. See, the Apostle John saw people in the book of Revelation in God, worshipping God in robes. Those people had not yet been born when he saw them. He said, these are the ones who came out of great, the Great Tribulation. They hadn't even been born in this world. But he saw the history of God. The history of God's purposes. And I thought, oh, Lord, I want to stay here forever. Whole galaxies began to flow past me. I saw angels in charge of whole galaxies, keeping everything ticking, working properly. I saw the, the, the purposes of God. And, and, I, and then I suddenly realized I shouldn't be seeing this. I was really bad. I just didn't keep my covenant with the Lord to wait on him. <laughs> oh, and I thought that the love of God totally overwhelmed me again. That's the grace, you know, and the goodness of God. And this went on for a, a long, long, long time. And suddenly, I was back in my room. I thought, my 
goodness. I said, Lord, shall I talk about this? Is this all I am allowed to talk about this? You know, I felt the Lord just smile at me. And I thought, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> you know, she smiled. <laughs> God is love. We're going to become absolute like him, pure, pure love. God's not going to release people into the earth with absolute authority unless they are 100% love. They would destroy the world, you know. Somebody, if they kind of, you know, if everything came to pass you said and you got angry, you know the things you say when you're angry? Don't look at me like that. You know what I'm talking about. And they came to pass? No, 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 you're not going to take that risk. <laughs> Look, we've got to keep pressing in. That day is really on our doorstep. There's coming a time. And that's going to happen in China. This is an experience of the Feast of Tabernacles, just like salvation is an experience uh, of the Passover feast, you know? We speak in tongues, it was an experience of Pentecost. This is an experience of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the next level. You know? Oh. Can, you get, can you get this? The revelation of it will build faith into your life. See, revelation is not just an understanding, it's a power. When you receive a revelation, two things happen. Faith is imparted for you to walk in it. If you have a revelation, you should step out and walk in it. Secondly, where that faith is imparted, and then everything you need is given to you to fulfill it. It's all set aside like that for you. You just have to appropriate as you need it by faith. That's revelation, it's a tremendous power. You know, it's not just, oh, now I understand. It's a power that comes into your spirit, comes here first, and then like lightning, it's transferred to here so you understand it. But with it comes another thing, faith is imparted. Substance has come with that revelation so that you can walk in it. Hallelujah. I really pray today that God would be able to, I would be able to get this across to you in such a way that you would understand it, that you would believe it, and that you would say, yes, that is for me. Because I've preached this once before, and I went over like a lead balloon. I tell you, just once. I thought, I'm never going to preach that again until I got here. <laughs> I tell you. So, yeah. You see, when people's hearts are open, it's a whole different ball game. And your hearts are open. You see, and I don't worry about losing my reputation. I don't care. You know, I live fourteen thousand miles away from you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got to close. Oh, uh, look. Hallelujah. The call of God is on all of our lives. You say, I don't have a call. Of course you do. You wouldn't be here on the planet if you didn't have a call. We're given that before the foundation of the world. God needs to awake. If you don't know what it is, God needs to awaken that in you. Just to, I'm going to pray that that will awaken in you. Uh, and tonight, because you know, it's so important. And the understanding of the call of God comes in, a, you know, in a number of ways. Firstly, God begins to draw you by His Spirit, right? Just draw you by His Spirit. And uh, in Jeremiah thirty-one three it says, "The Lord appeared to me of old, appeared of old unto me, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love." Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. See, Jeremiah knew God had a call on his life. He knew what, 
He said, I've drawn you. There's a drawing of your spirit to something. You know? And that it, it might not to be to ministry as we understand, but there's a drawing. You're being drawn to something. And then certain things will happen in your life. Like I was saying the other day, you'll be doing something and you'll hear something or you'll see something. It might be a movie, it might be a song you hear on the radio, radio, it won't be, and you start to cry. You say, well, what? What happens, you see? Whatever that was, you hear, it might be just the songs of words of a secular song. It, it'll hit you in here. Because what happens, it touches your destiny. And you think, oh, oh, I've had this happen to me so many times. You know, so, so many times. And you think, what is that? It made me come alive. I think, yeah, just, you know, has that effect on you? You're not sure why? Have you ever had that experience? Anyone had that experience? Yeah, see, lots of people. And you wonder about it, right? Touches, touch, it, something has touched your destiny. You see? I told you before, yeah, I was on a plane. A movie comes on. Field of Dreams. Oh, I just didn't watch it. Watch, I was on and I was, you know. And I heard these, these words in this movie. If you build it, we will come. I was alive. All over. I mean, I was half dozing, you know. I just heard those words in the background on this movie and the plane. If you will build it, we will come. I said, what, what, who? I thought it was the Lord. There's this movie. Oh, I tell you. I watched that movie carefully. Oh, it was a new age movie, but that's all right. I watched it all the way through. There came a time after that. I heard the voice of the Lord say, if you will build it, we will come. I knew exactly what he meant. I'd seen the movie. <laughs> I tell you, see? The call touches something in you. And it quickens everything in you. You think, oh, man. The call of God, you know, can come and make. Isaiah just heard the Lord say, who will, who, who will go for me? And he just volunteered. Sometimes the call of God comes that way. Something, you know, you hear something. Who will go? Who will go? A lot of missionaries went to the field this way. Who will go? But it was God drawing them trying to get a word of volunteering out of them. And when they volunteered, then, then the thing is set in place and set in motion. Now, all of you have a call. All of you, there's a purpose. You don't understand it now. It's going to awaken within you. You know? It'll awaken. God will draw you. You know, Moses, he said he saw their affliction. Of his brethren. Couldn't take it anymore. Didn't have any call. He was just brought up in the palace, you know. Didn't know anything but luxury. Taught in warfare. Taught in building. They were still building pyramids then. He was taught in all the arts of Egypt. One day he just looked out and he saw his people. He heard their groanings. Something in him went off. Went off hard enough. He killed the Egyptian that was afflicting his brethren. That's how strong that thing was in him. The call of God will come many, many, many ways. And between the call and between the commissioning into that call, there is a time of preparation. You can't go straight into the call. You have to be prepared to enter into that. Some of you got all kinds of, you know, Moses. God's call to Moses was that he was going to lead a few million people in, uh, out in, into the desert, you know? Now, he's, he was brought up in an environment in Egypt where nothing was impossible. They can build pyramids. Any army comes against them, they're skilled enough in warfare. They can handle, they could do anything. That, that's all he knew, brought up as a child and into a man. They can do anything. 
they can handle the masses. Now I know some, a lot of Egypt had to be taken out of him, but there were skills that he learned, which he needed when three, four, four, five million people were following him into the wilderness. See, sometimes your background skills are ordained of God. Part of it, sanctified, put into the kingdom to work with him. Okay? It's not all just preaching, you know? Everybody's going to get a crack at preaching once you get transfigured. So, just, uh, you know, oh, let's pray. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. 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 Where are the musicians here? Yeah. Thank you. I want you to be very still in your heart now. I want you to be very, very still. Can you just play, not just sing, but we'll sing in a minute, but play very, very quietly. Um, you might want to hum it or something as well. Holy, 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 what we were singing earlier. Yeah, just real quiet. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I saw that angel, you know, I talked to you about this morning, covered in diamonds all kinds of stuff, destiny. He's here to awaken destiny. And he's here tonight, because I can see him. He just came in about 15 minutes ago. He's, he's listening to me. This guy, this angel, has real power. Tell you. He has the power to awaken destiny and release what you need to fulfill it. And sometimes destiny is awakened in stages. We understand some, then we understand a little bit later, oh, it awakens. So, he's going to work with me tonight. Lord, you know every person here. You know their problems. You know their heartaches. You know our failures. You know everything about us. And you love us. You know the times we've fallen and you pick us up. Because you said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. But the Lord will uphold him. Most of our lessons in life are learned by getting it wrong first. Most of the millionaires in America, I've read some statistics, about 80% of them have been bankrupt at least three times. Interesting, isn't it? Mistakes. That's part of the school we're going through. I don't want you to be discouraged. You have a destiny. Stand up now. Come on, stand up tall on the inside. You were sent into this world with a purpose. Lord, I ask that there'll be a fresh awakening of destiny tonight and over the next few days and few weeks, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you will allow that angel to release destiny tonight. Just focus your heart and mind on the Lord now. Say, Lord, just in your heart, just focus in such a way that we, which means, Lord, I receive. I need more of you to help me through this. I need you, Lord. I need you to awaken within me the things that need to be awakened. Awaken my destiny. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of you are in limbo. Just 
not in one thorn thing and not in the next out of the old but not in the new it's a, like no man's land you know very frustrating place it's okay it's going to awaken fresh awareness of your destiny within you just raise your hands now thank you Lord Jesus Let destiny be awakened. In Jesus' name, let destiny be awakened. Receive it now. Receive it now. I see lights all over this auditorium. Lights, just small lights. Size of tennis ball. Lights dropping out of people's heads. All over this place. Destiny. Awakening. Oh, let it deep. Let it go deep within their spirit. And let them be awakened to the awareness of it. Let the comprehension of it begin to come, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, I speak in awakening, destiny, awakening, 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 awakening. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Awakening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That angel was walking up and down, throwing stones all over you. Each stone represents a destiny. Hallelujah. Destiny, 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 destiny. Receive it now. Receive it now. I want you just to begin to feel that. Just begin to feel it. Because sometimes this is quite gentle, uh, of an operation, and it needs sometimes just, just barely discernible. Just really before the Lord, begin to, just begin to breathe in and receive it. An act of faith. Breathe it in. Receive. Receive. It's like a package with awakened destiny in it. Receive. 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 Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive. Oh, I see it flowing, 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 flowing into many people now. Don't miss. Just reach out. Come on. You'll just feel, so you might not feel much, but you should feel something. Just you feel something. The drawing of the Spirit of God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. These people were sent here, Lord, from heaven. They were sent with an understanding of their destiny, which has become clouded through the years. Now, let it be awakened in the name of Jesus. Let it be awakened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let it be awakened. Mm. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. There is a purpose. There is a plan. And up to now, you've got to believe everything has worked together for good for you. No matter what happens. No matter what losses you have, no matter what gains you've had, no matter what's happened to you, you know that all things, God caused it to work together for you to fulfill your destiny. Let go of some of those things that you hold, things that you might be bitter about. Come on, all things can work together for good. He can redeem any situation. Turn it to good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's some here tonight, you have lost children. I feel it so strong. You've lost children, and you don't know why. You say, why God, why God, why God? My children were good kids. Why did I lose them? Why did that have to happen? You raise your hands, those of your lost children, maybe up to the age of 30 or whatever children you've lost. Just raise your hand, let me just see. Yeah. So many people. You know, oh God, when he's taking seed, he takes the best seed. He 
takes good seed, because seed reproduces what it is. You know, I lost my daughter. She wrote this whole thing out, what a funeral should be. And she signed it, seed. When I gave her a hug and she got on that plane, I didn't know I would never see her again in flesh. Seed. Nothing wrong with grieving. Grieving is a natural process. But you shouldn't grieve forever. You need to grieve, but you need to know you were Christians, God had need of her on the other side. And one day you'll be reunited. Hallelujah. You'll find they're closer than you think. Let them go. Let it go. All things are working together for good. Let it go. Come on. Some of you need to let that go. Let it go. If you need to cry, cry. But let it go. Give it to God. It needs to get out of your system. And let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things, all things, all things work together for good. I've been through some really bad situations in my life. Believe me. All things but work together for good. Hallelujah. All things. I've seen the most horrendous betrayals in my life. You say, why God? And all God ever sees says to me, I'm grooming your spirit. That's all. Training you. Father, I pray for every person who's lost a child here. And as they release them to you now, let the hurt, let the confusion within them evaporate now in Jesus' name. That thing which blocked their destiny rising to the surface. Let it be removed and awaken within them a fresh new understanding of their purpose in life. Ask you in Jesus' name. Ask you in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Look, I have seen many children die. I've held on to them in oxygen tents when they were dying. Many, many kid babies and children. They belong to God, you know. Your children are just long to you. He can do whatever he likes. My daughter came to me and said, there's no more prophecy to be fulfilled over my life. It's all been prophesied then. I said, there's nothing left. It's like her course had run. That's like on this side of the veil. Hallelujah. Destiny. I saw, I'll tell you what I saw tonight. I saw that angel throwing stones all over you. I saw them sinking into people. You might have just felt just a very faint awareness. Doesn't matter. Because over the next days and weeks, that will start to awaken understanding within you. Might be in a dream, might be in a memory that goes back. I remember God said that to me back then. I've forgotten all about it. It can be anything. It'll start to just awaken within you. And you say, yes. I knew that. That's my destiny. That's why I'm here. Hallelujah. Grief can hinder you from understanding that. She shut off, you know. Hallelujah. Let's sing that again. Holy. 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 Hallelujah. Let's sing together now. Holy. Holy. Holy God. Holy. Holy. Holy God, you are. 
That influence is over this side and just reach in. Let him just touch it. Let him awaken that in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just like awakening from a long lost dream. You just know why you're here. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Someone on this side of the auditorium, you've had the same dream three times, and then three times it involves you being killed in a car accident. Just raise your hand, just quickly now. Okay. I'll tell you now, that dream is not from God, okay? Because you did. It's seeking to cut across your destiny. I want you to reach out to God now, and I'm going to pray. And as I pray, you're going to let it go, and I'm going to break that thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it go now. I break that demonic influence now. I break its hold on your life now. In Jesus' name. That's better. Now, Lord, I ask you to give her dreams. Give them dreams of their destiny, their true destiny, in Jesus' name. You're going to dream, you're going to dream. Your dreams, there'll be more than one dream. And they'll be talking about you and what you, you know, might you see yourself doing things. It's destiny, man and a woman. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, there's a lot of mantles here tonight, and I want to tell you something. Catherine Coolman's mantle. You know, mantles are left behind, and then they're divided, and they become ten times more powerful as they're divided. 
and I can see 15, maybe 16 of these mantles. If you've ever felt low, or dreamt, or felt, you know, a God, and, 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 and you've watched her preach, and you've felt, I can do that. I should be doing that. Father, let those mantles fall now, in Jesus' name. Let them go to the right people. Let them fall now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The man here tonight, and you have a mantle, and it's a Joseph mantle. It's not just finance. It's more than finance. It's the ability to govern, ability for statistics, ability to pull things together. And, and, and only a way God can do it, just like Joseph did. And I want to pray tonight that 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 that, that man that you you're going to receive this mantle tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have, we have so many witnesses here tonight. So many walking the aisles, walking the aisles. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Somebody over here has the problem that Samson had with women. Okay? Not, not condemning you. You fought against this and fought against this. You struggle with it. Okay, let me tell you something. Close your eyes and reach up to God. You see, Samson is one of this cloud of witnesses. He'll come and minister to you. You open your heart now to God. Cry out to God. Say, God, break this thing in my life. He'll minister to you now. In fact, there's more than one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John G. Lake. John G. Lake. Part of cloud of witnesses. You ever read John G. Lake and been so moved by the Spirit of God? Read any of his books and been moved and moved and deeply moved by the Spirit of God? You receive that. Part of that mantle now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Let it settle into your spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. You know, Lord, Lord came to me just not too long ago and said, Neville, it's time for you to write a book. I said, no, I'm not good at writing. Yeah, you know, I'm serious. I'm not good at writing. And it's, I just kept it there in my heart. And I was reading a book by a man named Charles Price. You ever read any of Charles Price? Fantastic. And he was fluent, a really good writer. Write poetry and so on. And I was reading this book. I was aware of that man come next to me and lay his hand on me. For two, three days, every time I opened my mouth to speak, I spoke in rhyme. Perfect, beautiful rhyme. Couldn't stop it. You know, sometimes people were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they couldn't stop speaking in tongues, they couldn't speak English. It was like this. Every time I opened my mouth, I spoke in rhyme. And I said, Lord, what on earth is going on? He said, I'm giving you the ability to write. Hallelujah. God can do anything. Hallelujah. You know, I'm more at home in the field than in the office. I'm that kind of person. So it's hard for me to sit down for hours and write. <laughs> but, you know. God can give you anything you need. And he's here tonight. Many of card witnesses are here tonight. Give you anything you need. Hallelujah. 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 Samson finished with you guys. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you're listening to this streaming, we're not all mad here. You can receive what is happening here now. You can receive it. This is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, heaven on earth, the church of God in heaven and in earth. 
Haleluya. Haleluya. Oh, we bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. So many of you, over the next days, weeks, you're going to start to become aware. Aware of your destiny. You'll pick something up. You know, I was in a Christian bookshop about seven years ago, and I was about to make a decision. You know, and I was just not 100% sure. Making a major decision in our lives. And I was in this Christian bookshop, and this guy came up to me and said, you should read this book. And I'd never seen him in this Christian bookshop before. And he said, you should read this book. And I said, oh, okay. It was a book by Rick Joyner. And so I said, why should I be? And he'd gone. He wasn't in the shop anymore. I would still have the book in my hand. I read that book and I got to a part and whoop, there it is. Just awake. Hallelujah. How many of you read The Torch and the Sword? How many of you seen yourselves in that army? Good. Don't lose sight of it. Feed it, feed it, feed it. Hallelujah. It's your destiny, you see? You get excited with something like that? That's because you're living in this day and age and it's available to you. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, so many children are going to rise into that. You know, astound us. Astound us. Oh, I'm sorry we're going really late. I'll close out. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So much going on. But it'll stay with you. It'll stay with you when you sleep tonight. It'll be ministered to when you sleep. You might even dream and the things start might beginning to awaken, but they will over the next short time be start to awaken. You just gotta recognize it when it's happening, you know? It's in, oh, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Understand that now. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. You know all ministries are different. I'm I'm different to Stephen. If I run around, I'd lose the anointing. He runs around, he gains more. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I tried running. I lost all the anointing. But together, we may have a good team. I'll hold again. Hallelujah. And there's no competition. That's what I love. Nobody tries to outdo the other. That's what being a long time coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I could talk to you all night. But you get sick of me in the end, so <laughs> God bless you. I let your pastor talk to you now. <laughs>